was to um, compare this new um, interface um, called Positron. Um, and I'm going to try and show you that in comparison to our studio today. Um, so I'll start off with our studio, which is something hopefully we all know and maybe love. Um, so in our studio, you have your area for where you can write your scripts and where your output sort of arrive and you can sort of see your files and your plots and then also all your environmental variables and that sort of thing. So Ed put together a auto document today um, with the idea of creating a template to create essentially PowerPoint presentations in um, Quarto. So I'll just render it so that you guys can see it. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> oh, OK. So it's actually come up on my internet, but I will see if I can get it to come up here instead. Let's try that again. We could still see it if that makes it easier. Uh, potentially, but I think I got it to work. Yeah, there we oh. go. <laughs> so um, here you can sort of see the presentation and you can kind of flick through it. So it's quite nice. Um, and just in case people are interested, a little um, overview of roughly how the code is working. Up the top here, we have what's called a YAML header. And this is basically providing a lot of the basic information for the presentation. So you can sort of see um, the title and the author and the date show up on the first slide. And it's got some sort of uh, information, you know, like the logo, which is a very small, teeny tiny logo in the bottom right hand corner. Um, and things like transitioning, the themes and background images. And then below that, is where you can sort of start to write the slides and create the presentation basically. So for example, on this slide, you can see we've created a new slide by just putting two hashtags um, and then the title and the information. And I won't spend too long talking about making presentations because I think that's kind of a different video or session altogether. Um, but that's just a little quick sort of overview of sort of, you know, you can have columns, so you can have images and text, as well as including bullet points and also code on the output of code as well, if you want to. And you can also have these cute little call out um, bits. Ooh. I don't know what they're called really, but um, yeah, so that's sort of what it looks like in our studio. Um, but what we're actually here to talk about today is Positron. Hopefully it's just changed to Positron. Um, so this is Positron. And if any of you have ever previously used um, things like VS Code or maybe Python, this might seem a bit familiar to you. Um, otherwise, it's a little different, um, but there's similarities. So we can have um, We'll create a. Let's open the folder for today, actually. Uh, where is it? Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Cool. So if I open that folder, <clears throat> this is again the. Um, this is the same document as in our studio, um, but what's slightly different with Positron is that over here, you can have, well, you've got your list of all your different files rather than being um, in the other, so in this section down here. Um, but you have the same sort of area to write your code and you have areas to sort of look at your plots, et cetera. And you have your output area and this is where your variables and data and stuff like that will show up if you create them. So if I quickly just, run this in here as well. 
hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work. Um, so, yeah, you can see here that it's worked just as well in here. Um, so, yeah, there's some sort of benefits, I think, to Fuzzatron in comparison to RStudio, but I guess I'll start off with why the RStudio company that is now known as Posit has decided to come up or start using this different interface. Um, so basically, RStudio sort of started as being a user-friendly interface to the old-fashioned R, which was quite unfriendly and could be quite difficult to use. Um, but because their name was initially RStudio, um, it was very much seen as being related to just R. Um, and then in November 2022, I believe, they rebranded themselves to Posit with the idea of trying to sort of reach a broader audience and um, sort of reflect their general broader focus of using different languages or supporting different languages and using tools and solutions that aren't just limited to R. So another thing with Positron actually that you don't necessarily get in R is um, these things called extensions, which you can find over here. Um, and these can do sort of different things. So you can get things from different themes or you can get um, extensions that can help with formatting code or it might be something to support particular um, features. So it's not showing up here, but you can have a Quarto extension. I'll just search for it. So mine is already installed because I installed Quarto on my computer, but you can sort of install Quarto, which would enable you to um, create the PowerPoint presentation. But there's also other sort of fun things. Um, so one that I like is called Indent Rainbow. Um, let's see if I can find it. Do, do, do. So with this one, um, once it installs, if I jump over to this fun script, you can sort of see um, that it highlights things and highlights the indent. So you can see all the different sort of levels. And if I were to press a space or um, the, the tab button, it sort of shows different colors, um, which I think can be quite helpful if you've got a lot of code and you're trying to figure out what everything is and keep things organized. Um, and another fun uh, extension is um, something called Fritify, and you can um, use it to sort of format your document. So I basically um, click Control Shift P, which brought up the command palette, and then typed in format, and that just sort of reformatted the document to make sure that everything was neat and tidy. Um, yeah, so what's quite good about Positron is that you can also use things like Python quite easily in it, whereas in RStudio using Python can be quite difficult and it doesn't necessarily always go to plan. Um, so at the top here, you can sort of see that you could click over to Python. I don't have the correct packages installed, so I won't be doing that. And I also don't know much about Python myself. Um, but Ed has assured me that it is a benefit, so I'll take his word for it on that one. Um, it also apparently has better integration with things like Git and GitHub if you're doing version control. Um, and another really positive thing is that you don't have to um, set your working directory in the same way that you do in RStudio. Um, basically, when you open a folder, it just assumes that that folder is your working directory. Um, so that's super convenient. Um, yeah, and then when if you're sort of dealing with data, if I just run the script that we got here, um, this is just some really simple data from my PhD that I just quickly got up when I was sort of having a play with Positron. 
just to sort of see what it sort of looks like. Um, so one thing that I did notice, um, let's go to the very beginning. Whoops. So down here, you can sort of see your variables, um, which is very similar to in R Studio. So if I just jump back to R Studio and open the same folder and run that script. Do, 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 do. Hopefully, <laughs> at some point, it will all, whoops, a daisy, uh, start loading. Let's try again, shall we? Cool. So you can see in our studio that you've got your um, data loaded and you can sort of click down and see some sort of information about it. But when I was playing in Positron, um, what I found was that when you click down in your data, it's a little bit more organized and you can sort of click into things and actually see the data a bit more clear. And then um, you can also click this little button over here which brings up your data in a sort of data viewer. And I thought this was actually quite cool um, because you can click on these little arrows and it gives you some like summary information about your data. So, you know, it can sort of tell you if you've got any missing points um, and some really cool stuff like that. So for my um, factor variables, although it's not currently set as a factor, um, it's telling me I've got five unique values, which is correct. So I know that um, if I was just having a quick glance of my data, it's quite easy to spot some errors that might or might not be there. Um, so I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, and then if I just run the rest of the script, one thing that I did notice um, in Positron is that um, or at least I haven't figured out yet how to just run line by line, um, which I think is quite similar to in like VS Code where it just runs the entire document. Um, and I noticed that if I run it, so you can, um, you still get your plots and things um, very nicely up in this corner. Um, I haven't particularly played around with plots too much, but you can sort of change how they look a little bit, um, which is potentially convenient for some people. Um, but yeah, and then what I noticed um, was that when I ran this model um, and I tried to get the summary output, it doesn't show in the console. So if I just, uh, I'll run it again just so that you guys can see. So here, the last thing in the console that's coming up is um, my data, which is because I've run this line of code here. So that's just sort of telling me what my data is and everything um, quite quickly. But the summary isn't coming up in the same way that it would in R Studio. So just um, for example, um, if we just run the summary line here oh dear apparently not um you can see that down here you've got sort of the output so i found that to get the output out in positron i was having to um use this i was putting having to put print in front of it to get it to actually run so when i do that it sort of comes out down here um so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, however, Positron is very much in the sort of early testing stages. So I don't know if that's something that they'll potentially change at some point, or if that's just generally um, how they sort of plan to keep it going forwards. Um, yeah. And then you sort of, similar with like models and stuff, you can see them over here. And you can sort of see some of the information over here as well. Um, I don't know if that's more useful or less useful than having it out in the console where everything's sort of next to each other, but 
it's another way of sort of looking at it. Um, yeah. Is there anything else <laughs> that I was going to talk about? Okay, so that was a very quick <laughs> overview. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, that was a very quick 20 minutes. <sighs> Are they going to make our studio redundant at some stage? So my understanding is that they're still at the moment planning on keeping our studio up to date. Um, I think that it's probably due to the fact that our studio is kind of very liked by people, I think, or some people like it, some people maybe not, but a lot of people are used to our studio and it's kind of um, more sort of specific for R, so for people that only really use R, it's probably more of a easier choice and something that's better known. Um, but yeah, I think the guys at Posit are interested in trying to broaden their sort of reach. Um, so to my knowledge, they're keeping our studio up to date for the foreseeable future at the moment, um, but they're also working on Positron. So I guess we'll have to watch the space a little bit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully it wouldn't be too much of an issue trying to move from our studio to Positron, but I think there'd be a learning curve. Um, Sophie? Hello, Megan. Um, just really quickly, do we know much about kind of the interoperability between R and Python in this environment yet? Yeah, so um, you, it's supposed to be easier to sort of use R and Python together in Positron. Um, but I'll be honest with that is that I'm not very experienced with Python. Um, and I myself haven't played around with Python yet, but it does sort of have the ability to change to a Python environment. Um, in a way that's probably easier than I think it would be to try and do that in our studio and probably more reliable than doing it in our studio. Um, but that's something that uh, I'd have to try. And yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Ed might know, but he's not here. So. I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, it's quite exciting if there is sort of better interoperability like especially when you think about like machine learning um, mm. and how that's kind of generally done more in Python and because like for my project I kind of started off using Python and then switched to R and it was just it was quite it was a bit clunky if I'm honest so this is quite I'm quite excited about this opportunity really. <laughs> yeah yeah no I think it'll be really interesting to have a look at actually and hopefully I'll get to have a play with that myself as well because um, I think it could be really, really quite good in that sense, um, because I've definitely found myself with certain things where I have been sort of playing with Python. Like, sometimes I'm more used to doing stuff in R or R Studio, but being able to sort of connect the two in one place rather than jumping back and forth between different sort of um, systems, I think would be really helpful. And yeah. I think it could be quite exciting. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could show you, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, Yeah, <laughs> um, I don't particularly have anything else to add. Um, Megan, I don't think anybody's blaming you because it's yeah. holiday season, so <laughs> don't feel stressed. <laughs> um, but yeah, if anyone, I did anyone happen to sort of have a go <laughs> or anything? I imagine probably not because there's a lot to download, but 
is anyone actually going to, do they reckon they'll have a go at using Positron in the future? I will have a go quite quickly, I think, just to, because uh, Tom's uh, question about running the R Studio further down the line, my bet would be they will uh, mod ball each yeah. one day. Yeah. Yeah, the, I feel like got a new product. <laughs> yeah, once I think because Positron at the moment is very much in its early stages of sort of testing and development. Mm. So probably once it's more of a stable platform and more people have started using it and got used to it, they might eventually sort of start petering off on the R Studio um, maintenance. But yeah. Yeah, I'll that give it a go. <laughs> is one thing I've in for anyone that wasn't here at the beginning, I have put a link to um the page to download Positron in the chat and it's also here on the um Alpha Data Science page. But it's hosted on GitHub at the moment and it's not the most um intuitive thing to find. So basically when if you do decide to download it and you come to this page. What you need to do is on this first one, um, if you just click assets um, and it brings up the sort of uh, files to download here. So um, this is the setup. And if like me, you're using a university system that requires admin approval to download anything, um, they also have a user setup version. So you just set it up for your own user rather than for the entire computer. And then you actually don't need admin approval. Um, which is super helpful, I thought, anyway. Um, but yeah. Apparently it is possible to run single lines and not the whole file. It is in Visual Studio Code, it might be the same for Positron. It's a bit of a tricky uh, thing, but apparently you can. Yeah. So, so if you go back to Positron, mm -hmm. and then in the terminal, yeah. yeah, if you click on the three dots, there should be an option. Yeah, you can do run selected text. Okay. So then if you highlight some lines, you should be able to just do these. I'm pretty sure you could be able, you should be able to attach a shortcut key combination to do it quickly instead of having to click. So that might mm -hmm. be something to do in the settings. But apparently yeah. it's, the, it's the thing that, it, that exists, which would be nice because I think that like compared to our studio, I really like the possibility to run selected um, lines instead of the, of the whole thing. Yeah, I'm, so that's one works. thing. I it didn't seem to work when I or did it work? Maybe, yeah, I can. It didn't seem to run the selected text, so I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing the correct thing now. Yeah, but, or maybe um, it doesn't work yet. I don't know. It's... <laughs> yeah, but I did. Um, notice and I forgot about is that you can go up to the little three dots at the top and insert a code cell. Um, so in theory, you could have different code cells. So if I mm. move that bit of text down here, I could then in theory just run that by itself. Yeah. Um, I haven't quite figured out how you close the code cell yet, though. So <laughs> um, it's very much still a learning process for me, mm -hmm. but. Hopefully, if anyone has a go and comes up with any useful tips, I'm sure people would be appreciative of them sharing it. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it can be a team effort. Yeah. Oh, that's also um, just jumping back to the presentations. When you render it, it um, creates a HTML file, which does actually give you um, some really fun HTML code. If anyone's interested in HTML. Um, but yeah, so I think um, if you were to open that outside of Positron, it would come up sort of like it did um, at the beginning when I tried to run it and it previewed on my browser instead of the viewer. So that's just, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys. <laughs> um, yeah. I have a slightly daft question. Go for it. 
So I've been mucking around with it in this meeting just because I was like, oh, new shiny thing. And I changed the appearance to Zen mode and I can't figure out how to change it back. So if anyone knows how to change it back. Okay. Um, but I know if you go to file, there's references. And I don't necessarily know. I know how to change the colour, which is quite fun. Um, but there is a settings. So I, yeah, if you maybe go to settings and search Zen, potentially one of these um, tick yeah. boxes might help. So I've kind of changed it to a view where it doesn't have any of like the file view edit or settings available okay so at, at the like up here the drop down yeah that's gone completely okay <laughs> just I, I could uh. just uninstall it and reinstall it again <laughs> but that feels extreme yeah uh, I'm trying to think if there's a way of getting it to um there's a settings at the bottom can you see that no, all I've got at the bottom is console, terminal problems, output ports, debug console, and then. Okay. Um, do, do. Can you see the search tab at the top? Yes. Okay. No. Uh, do, do. Let's try. Can you, um, if you press Control Shift P, and then type in settings, does anything come up? No, I just get no matching results. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not entirely sure. That's okay. Um, might have to be a Google, that one. Yeah, or I'll just uninstall it and reinstall it and not wildly click everywhere. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I can think of is if there's a shortcut. Oh, okay. Try control K Z. Control. Or I should just, just escape, maybe. Oh yes, escape to work. Thank you very much. Yay. Thank Success. you, Megan. <laughs> it's okay. It's good to know for the future if I do that. So <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, um, if no one's got any questions, I will maybe let you guys go early and you can go have fun for the rest of your afternoon evenings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. No worries. Thank you, Megan. Bye. Bye. Bye.